So I'm actually recording at two places. One is on a big blue button that is going to appear uh, on emergency. On, 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 on. So um, when uh, when you log in to uh, big blue button next time, you will see that the recording of the session is going to appear over there. So um, let's uh, quickly go through. Um, what we uh, talked about last time. I'm gonna to, uh, close down my video so we have more real estate on the screen. So I'm gonna. Uh, um, is the screen? Uh, is the projector full screen? Do you see my f uh, my video on the uh, on the projector? Perfect. So I don't need to stop my video. The video can keep going. All right. That's all I wanted to know. Okay. Thank you. Um, and it's amazing that it worked so nicely like this. So uh, let's start. Um, uh, last week, <coughs> we continued working on the, um, let me just put this thing away. Um, yeah. So as I, as I was saying last week, we, um, uh, uh, started uh, continued working on our on the screen uh, on the string class of that we had we went through a few things in here uh, I'm gonna just uh, review it right uh, um, and, and go through it so we can actually uh, see what we talked about if you have any questions please uh, uh, add it in a chat you will see that I'm gonna instead of asking you um, uh, questions as I usually do in class I'm gonna uh, issue polls so you will see something like this on the screen so uh, you will see something like So you see it, uh, you will see uh, a poll will come. So just you click on the poll and you answer the poll, and the polls are going to come up. I know who's answering and who's not. And with these polls, I know actually who's listening and who's not. So <laughs> when you see the poll, please reply to the poll. Um, you hear a ding coming out of your uh, speakers, and that show that actually says that the poll was actually um, uh, issued. Uh, if uh, if I ask for a reply, the poll is going to look like this. So uh, I can ask questions like this. And like this, you put an answer. So all the mi the microphone that I usually take in my hand and come to class and ask questions, you can simply answer the questions like this, and we'll know how everything is. And I'm going to post the uh, so the when the answers come up, you will see uh, you're not going to see who did what. I see who is saying what, but when I po uh, put the responses up, it just tells how many people answered what, and it's not going to show what your answer is. So nicely answer the question there is no problem when I publish it as you see this is what's going to come up take a look at the chat and you will see that on the chat um, uh, it shows who answered what all right so Fantastic. So you're getting a hang of it. So good. So let's start. So as we were saying in class, we created a, a structure in this a, a, a class to kind of cover all the uh, nasty works that we have to do for the uh, C string. So we create our own SDR and the SDR that we created over here encapsulates everything we do in uh, encapsulates everything we do in uh, uh, in strings uh, um, in C language so it brings all the stuff inside and we can actually work on it uh, work with it much more comfortably so 
what we have done over here uh, was uh, first we created a no argument constructor so uh, we said at uh, the string class of ours obviously it has a, a data pointer and a data pointer is a pointer to a character and a null termination is going to uh, be our end of data indication that's why we don't have the size in here although we could add it but we don't have it um, the no argument constructor as we mentioned actually uh, initializes the data to 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 null pointer and we said any part of the class that we want to initialize to a specific type of thing that initialization can be done in the initialization area so the initialization area over here we said it's a made up word that I made you cannot google it and find it there is no such thing what you see over here is a place that you can set initial values of all the properties of the class any type of property that we have and the initialization can be done in two different ways all the uh, the, the first one is the uh, universal way of initialization or using parentheses one of these two you cannot use the the assignment in here for initialization then uh, after doing that we said okay that's an empty string if we want to create a string starting with some initial value in it I need a construct a one argument constructor the one argument constructor of ours first sets follows the golden rule of dynamic memory allocation which is essentially um, setting the data to null pointer then we reused our the function we have written in the utils to um, allocate and copy the data and looking at what the allocate and copy uh, is doing uh, is this oh I put a wrong I brought the wrong thing up so that's the one yes that's but hmm, it goes actually there mm, so I think that's better there we go so what allocation and copy do, is doing it receives a, a reference of uh, a character pointer so it can set values to it and put uh, uh, dynamic memory allocation in it so uh, whatever it comes over here will be the new name for the uh, pointer that is coming in so the destination over here when it's called becomes m data and actually sets the data of the class when it's called so when we say delete destination over here it essentially deletes m data and that's why we are passing the reference and i am preparing this so i can actually go through that there we go so um, so that's what we're going to do so uh, we understand uh, uh, why we uh, uh, so let me just add you to something like this I am uh, uh, creating a poll so I can actually uh, all right so my question is going to be that kind of shows me that if we are so um, does, uh, we understand well we, why we are passing a reference to the to, to the uh, to the allocate and copy so the reference that is being set over here is essentially the, the reference of the pointer that we have in a string so it deletes the value sets it to null then checks to see if the source that we are receiving actually has data we could actually do it in two different ways we said could say uh, um, if um, if yeah I wanted to say shall we do something like this or not Let's put over here source zero say so if there is no data I don't do any copying at all and yeah, we could do that too so we say if there is a that if there is a source is pointing to something and the something that is pointed to has value in it to the dynamic memory allocation otherwise we can just keep the destination as no um, are we okay with the uh, uh, are we okay with this 
if you have any questions you can stop if you are not at school you can turn on your microphone at any time and ask questions that's my preferred way but if you are at school you cannot turn your microphone on because uh, the microphone of the uh, actually uh, did you try to see if podium has a microphone like if you actually turn on the microphone will it work so then you could actually ask questions right in class if you wanted to anyways so um, next thing um, so that's how we get the uh, uh, the one argument constructor and then we went to we said okay uh, if if that's the case <clears throat> maybe I want to allocate uh, create uh, the uh, initialize by string with some literal value uh, uh, string that I'm receiving but I want to go up to maximum length and what am I gonna do then uh, for that we uh, created a, an overload for for allocation and copying and in that allocation and copying what we did we simply limited the the size of uh, memory allocation so we should we essentially said if the length that we have is greater than the length that we want shorten it by the length otherwise use the length itself and therefore allocation and copy goes right up to that point if you have any question um, one other way of doing it is to raise your hand and uh, raising your hand you can simply uh, click on your uh, uh, on um, uh, what you may call it uh, uh, your own icon and there's a set status and on set status you can actually raise hand so um, I see if there is a question yes I can see hand is up uh, what's up uh, tell me uh, do, if you have any question and if uh, you, professor could yes. you just repeat uh, explain the this pointer once again while you go through it uh, give me line number uh, so not in I cannot see the this pointer over here could yeah. you just go oh, to the str the this pointer THIS. This pointer. yeah THIS. oh yeah wait this wait wait I'm, I'm coming down so I'm doing constructors when I get to set and not all those stuff I'm gonna explain all those okay all right so so that's that so now we know how to uh, raise hands so that's if you do that then I know exactly if somebody have any question all right uh, the next thing um, uh, so yeah so that was the allocation and copying that we have done and the next thing we did we created the structure to make sure we don't have any memory leak and that was the creation and destruction of the string class created and we were done then we said what if we want to set our uh, uh, object halfway through that what is the difference between setting and actually constructing the difference between construction is that when you are constructing you don't have any data so you set your data to null pointer and allocation and copying the the, the fact that allocation and copy deletes data that deletion will not do anything because it's null. but setting means the object is already created and it may have data in it therefore your allocation and copy must delete the data so in here when we actually say delete so this this <clears throat> must delete pre-existing data okay and we could just end it over here and simply have void over here but instead of doing that we said set can return the reference of its owner which means when you are actually setting immediately after setting you can actually do something with it going back to our main I'm gonna bring the main over here oh that's utils that's not main uh, save okay so What I was saying is that in here I have name as Fred. Now, line number seven. What does what does line what 
What does line number seven call? So one person said it correctly and the rest are not. Actually two people, three people said it correctly and people are keep going so those people who are saying initial initializing you're absolutely right so now we know that we are initializing if somebody said correct i don't know what that even means but uh, um, so the answer over here is that sd so i'm going to tell you name is being initialized by the character c string fred so we know it's initialized because of initialization what is being called over here I'm asking the question again because name is being initialized not set what is being called in here somebody said set that's incorrect set means it is not initialized sets its exact opposite of initialization there is no assignment in here involved so assignment is a wrong question is so somebody said line 9 from strcpp that's beautiful roy you got yourself one percent for the midterm okay you got yourself one percent for the midterm uh, remember to claim it okay so it is the constructor so essentially we mentioned that this means this And it means so all these three are the same so these three things that I have written and if you remember I said this is potato and this one is potato and this one is pitoto whatever <laughs> We don't have this, the, 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 the third one, so I'm going to go with like this. So all these three are the same, no difference. And all of these are actually, all of these are calling this one, the one argument constructor. So remember, assignment at the moment of creation is not assignment. It is a call to a one argument constructor okay so um, are we okay with this all right so now that we know that let me just uh, comment these because we don't want them now that we have Fred over here I can say name name dot print and I can print uh, and bring the uh, show the name and when I run this program we will know that the print is going to get called and Fred is going to be displayed on a the screen there is no question about it but the problem over here was uh, oh god I don't know how, I'm going to destroy your name uh, Divyanshu, is that, did I pronounce it properly? <laughs> okay, my apologies. I, I, I apologize at the beginning of the semester and I do it again. I, I, I'm going to destroy your name. So um, now I want your attention. You asked, explain what this THIS is. The here is where we go through it. So in here, I'm going to say name the set. So this set actually, that I'm going to set it to Jack, what it's going to do is different with the constructor because it has to remove the thread so when we get over here when we actually get to the set and we reach to the set when it actually comes to the set as you see m data is pointing to fred when it goes to allocation and copying destination becomes a new name for the data so when it deletes that one fred actually gets deleted sets to not null pointer checks to see if source is valid it is dynamic memory allocation happens and now we have name set to uh, to Jack and if I print the name afterwards 
and run the program, we will see Jack is printed. Now, my question, and I want uh, 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 Devanshu, you hear me? Are you at uh, at school or uh, home? No, professor, I'm at school. You're at school, but uh, yeah. apparently you're not in class because I don't get any feedback. So yes, yes. good. So, so good. Just so uh, have your microphone on. I want to explain what this is, and I want your response to make sure you understand. Okay. Okay. So okay. The set over here, set Jack that I have over here, is a member yes. of name, correct? Yes. Now, if I want to bring the print up and put it over here what should this set return so print prints the name uh, uh so basically print uh, so see out maybe see out no, no, not see out because see in here i'm saying dot print so it means print belongs to this correct whatever it is yes. so whatever yes. this is will be the owner correct Ooh, yeah. For the name to get printed, what those three question marks should be replaced with? Name. Fantastic. You nailed it. So set should return the name, which is its owner, correct? Oh, yeah. But when we are inside set, we don't see mm -hmm. the owner. Who's the owner? Yes. It's the, the current object, correct? Yes. And the address of the current object happens to be inside the this pointer so Ooh. if i put an asterisk beside it mm -hmm. set can return the reference of its owner therefore the return value of the whole thing becomes name, name. got it i see yeah does I that make sense know. now yes 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 all right yes. so we are in b we are, we are, good 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 we're in business now you can mute yourself okay um everybody else is okay with what i just said all right so now that we are at this stage so everything is good so now we know what this is so we started adding stuff to to our class last time we said okay we can actually have stuff like uh, um, uh, we can uh, first of all we can make sure that print prints on many different things so we pass the O stream to it and I just gave you a sneak peek on how files can be used even for this one because because files are children of O stream and therefore they know how O stream works and so on and so forth and we added few features to read to be able to read from the screen so we did all those also we did concatenation which essentially is like setting but it just adds to the to the value and we resize the uh, the 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 value of the the resize the um, uh, what should we call it the, the data and we uh, concatenated the information that is coming in to the already existing value of the string so everything went okay and I had no we have no problem and they all returned this then we said we do not only want to have dynamic memory uh, we do not want to have only literal C strings but we may want to be able to uh, have like two different things so I want to have something like SDR uh, last name and I set that one to Soleil and uh, I want to be able to and let's say I have a SDR full name And um, what I want to do is uh, instead of uh, just uh, uh, setting regular uh, strings to it, I want to be able to say full name dot set and I'm going to put over here name. So now if I want that to happen, I need to pass the reference of the uh, of the object of a, of a of the similar object to the set and then call the set function that I had uh, uh, that I already used but in, instead of uh, passing the object I'm gonna pass the M data so I reuse my code and return this and then because of that I could again say over here set uh, uh, sorry cat so this cat will going to is going to add a space between the two so I'm gonna say set the full set the full name to name then concatenate it to with uh, uh, a, a space and then concatenate it with last name 
and then print it. So doing something like this shows exactly what cascading is. So set returns this, therefore it will be first setting the full name to Fred, then it, con it, it returns the full name and it concatenates the space to the full name that returns the full name concatenates last name to the to after that and then it prints it and the result of the whole thing will be fred space sole are we okay down to this point fantastic and that was the end of our story for last time and now today we're gonna continue our uh, work with some interesting very very interesting stuff before we continue do we have any questions Krish go ahead what's the question if you have a question if you said yes either activate your microphone miss click that's fine uh, how about uh, uh, Divyanshu how about you same misclick okay that's very fine no problem so we are all good and I see the rest are sleeping because I see Abby Hugh uh, uh, Sue uh, Tianvu they are not responding to the poll so uh, if you don't have any question let me know <laughs> all right okay so I know that you're not sleep anyway so so that's that so now uh, now that we are done with all these good stuff what I'm going to do is to kind of have uh, um, um, a chat about understanding uh, what operators are and what do they look for so look to look look like so I'm gonna add over here new item I'm gonna call it operator.txt operator.txt we're just gonna add right few things over here so in the classroom and at home uh, can you see this perfect so let's talk about operators now I'm going to use a general uh, sign over here for operator which is actually an incorrect thing to do because uh, this is not it, it, it is um, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to write over here something like B at sign C. So when I say B at sign C, it means this at sign, first of all, we don't have any operator called at sign. We know that, right? There is no operator called at sign. So I have, to show what an operator is and how it works, I put at sign to fill it and then in here I'm gonna say a is set to so I'm not talking about this operator with this operator I am actually saying what the result of the at sign is being put into so my focus is the at sign do we understand this all right so let's talk about this first of all to just make it clear and and to be able to generalize everything I'll, I'm gonna write something over here so I'm gonna say a type a B type B and I'm gonna write C type C so we assume that this operator is as it's so first of all let's call the names the and over here the at sign over here the at sign is what we call an operator okay B and C are operands okay so B and C are called operands and at sign is called operator do we understand this so essentially if we if we want to rephrase it we can say B and C are like arguments so what arguments are for functions what arguments are for functions when you pass arguments to functions are operands for operator do we understand this 
Okay, so having said that, let's start analyzing this and, and see what we are dealing with. These type of operators, so I'm going to bring it over here. So these type of operators, we call them binary, binary operators. Okay, so binary, op well, they call it binary operators because they have two operands. Okay, because they have one and two operands, they call it binary operators. It means an operator that accepts two operands. That's all. Okay, so that's what it is. Um, next thing over here is to understand what happens to B and C when a binary operator, regular binary operator, the most common binary operator. Uh, works with. So if I say over here A and I do over here plus C, my question is after this operation is done, after this operation is done, are the values of B and C modified? So the question is when the question is when plus operator is done, will B and C or C actually or C change perfect actually a couple of people are saying yes three four people said yes so those people who said yes please listen to me if I say A is if I say B is three uh, C is four and I write A is equal to B plus C and I say over here C out B and C I want you to tell me what is the output of line I want you to write over here what is the output of line 15 and I have to look at the people who actually said yes okay what is the output of line 15 I want everybody to answer especially those people who say seriously Peter one you wrote B and C the output is B and C I just said B is 3 why you're saying B and C okay also uh, Cam I didn't say A so what your what the your answer was this okay A this this one prints 7 this one prints 3 space 4 do we understand this All right, so these type of operators are operators who do not change the operands. We call this binary operators with no side effect, which means after they are done, they are not going to, uh, the answer is no, big no, okay? Uh, okay, so and we have many examples we have i a is set to b minus c we have a set to b divided by c all these things are binary operators with no operands uh, uh sorry well binary operators with no side effect binary operators with no side effect are we okay with this all right so that's the first type that we want to talk about but there are kind of operators that they act like this so so there's kind of binary operators that are like this when I say a is when you have something like this my question is will B or C so again the question when plus equal operator is done will B or C change mm -hmm. 
the answer is so some people are saying no you're absolutely wrong of course it changes if I print B B is gonna have 7 because plus equal will add the value of C to that one do we understand that B changes in here this plus equal operator it's a binary operator but it changes the value of B do we understand this oopsie daisy yeah all right okay good so now that we are okay with this we know that these type of operators are called binary operators with side effect and the examples of these are a is set to say b uh, minus equals c and uh, even bc so you do something like this if left one is c out so if i write something like this this has side effect why because it changes c out it prints something on a screen c will not change but c out will change so this has side effect so line 50 is an operator that has side effect do we understand this all right so these are binary operators let's see what else do we have we have uh, operators that act like this so we have something like a is set to at sign B we we'll call these things unary operators so one operand okay now unary operator with one operand um, is uh, an operator that accepts only one value it modifies that value what it gets the value does something with that value and returns it unary operators uh, uh, like uh, they, they have operators that have no side effect like something like a is set to minus B or a is set to not B. things like this so unary operators uh, uh, the first version that we have they have no side effect because uh, they take the value of B they do whatever is supposed to be done with it and return the value but afterwards if you print B it remains the same so in here this not operator assumes that this is a condition if it's true it returns uh, zero if it's uh, returns false if it's false it returns true but the fact is that B afterwards remain what it was so this un these unary operators are uh, unary operators with no side effect are we okay with this all right we have only one unary operator that actually has side effect that unary operator is this so I can say a is set to if I do something like this this unary operator is a unary operator and it has side effect so we do have unary operators that change the uh, the the operand that they have uh, are we okay with this all right now unary operators and, I, and I'm gonna actually uh, correct this this is prefix unary operators so prefix unary operators they come before the operand in C language um, unlike mathematics we have an operator we have only two operators that they can be postfix so I can write a is set to B plus plus or I can write a is set to B minus minus these are postfix unary operators with side effect it's not prefix is postfix yeah uh, so and these are the only two there are no other operator that is postfix it's only plus plus and minus minus 
Are we okay with this? All right. So any questions down to this point? Okay, so what I'm going to do now, uh, uh, I need to get a break. I'm sorry. Um, so we're going to have a short break, uh, five minutes. I'm going to pause the video, pause the recording. When we come back, please remind me to uh, resume the recording, okay? So say we're going to get together at 10.50. It's 10.42. We're going to get back at our computers at 10.50. Are we all okay with this? All right. Thank you. Pausing the recording on big blue button. Pausing the recording. Resume recording here. So let's continue. So we talked about operators. We understood how operators work and now um, uh, what operators are, what they're um, used for. And now let go, let's go back to our code in here. Now, let's take a look at what we have over here. So uh, first of all, this is a little too... Uh, uh, let me just save it over here. I'm going to say over here. Mm, a explaining... this I am I am resuming it is it is record it is continuing thank you thank you thank you everyone so uh, um, explaining I'm gonna say this dot CPP and let's go back in here now now let's take a look uh, having this if I If I write something like this, if I write, uh, let's actually bring these over here. So let's forget about the initialization and let's actually have one of them set. So in here, I'm going to put. So if I have something like this over here. Can anybody tell me what is the difference between the assignment? Oh, what am I doing over here? Let's let's do it like this in here. I'm going to say dot set. Can anybody tell me what is the difference between setting at line 11 and setting at line 7? What is the difference between setting at line 11 and setting at line seven. You can either turn on your microphone and say it or write the answer. Very short form. Tell me this is versus that one. So seven is something. Say what is seven doing. Say what is eleven doing. Yeah, I understand what. So I th so I, th I maybe I didn't. Um, uh, everybody's answering correctly. Everybody's answering correctly. You may publish that. Everybody's saying over here one has allocation, the other one. Is like so, so the only person who actually answered, like the two people who answered, so you're saying seven is constructor, eleven is member function. So the correct wording is that seven is initialization and eleven is setting. It's not initialization. Um, um, do, are we okay with this? All right. So, if we would have, if we wanted to change set and call set using an operator, like if, given if we wanted to uh, say uh, what set does, um, mm, which operator 
is similar to what set does that's my question which operator is similar to what set does everybody's answering correctly it's the it's the assignment operator perfect now if I do this which operator is similar to what cat does so everybody answer I want to see how many I actually ask you some people are writing stuff that I have no idea what those things are um, but keep going I want to see what everybody says you Sheng Sue Roy Chris Hugh Hui Fang okay so let's look at the answers many of you said like eight like 50 percent of you said plus plus doesn't change the left side cat does cat changes the name but plus doesn't if you write a plus b a and b are unchanged cat is over here between name and space it is adding the space to name so people who chose uh, uh, who uh, answered one those are the ones who answered correctly space bar print and curly bracket I have no idea what they mean okay uh, Chris you want to say something I see you you're trying to type something are you typing something no okay so so the op so this one is is assignment that's the operator okay this one is plus equal because it's adds something to the cat so they and they both have side effects both of these two have side effect none of these can be set in a way that I can say uh, it, it like if I had something like this if I had so if I had something like this full name Ah, we'll talk about that later so um, um, are we okay down to this point are we okay down to this point oh no wait, 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 wait wrong one are we okay down down to this point okay so now I want everybody's attention okay this is important I want everybody's attention see what I'm what I'm about to do I am not going to write any code I am just going to rename something so in here I'm going to say any place that I have set, I'm going to change that set with operator equal. So please pay attention. I am not, I am not writing any code. I am just renaming. So I'm going to say rename everything that is set to operator equal. And I'm going to say change everything that is cat to operator plus equal. And I'm going to just change everything so now take a look I did not change anything people please uh, let's appreciate that and why is it giving me that did it say didn't I do it for current project yes I did so why is it giving me okay so intelligence is going bananas it's, it doesn't matter so take a look at it if I look at PRG that's what it is so now the name of set is operator equal now this name of plus that's the so and then I can say over here uh, full name dot operator plus equal I can do this dot operator plus equal 
and then I'm going to add uh, not plus equal operator equal that is set I'm going to say last name then I can say uh, sorry uh, first uh, name not last name name let's set it to name now I can say full name dot operator uh, plus equal now with last name and then in here I can say uh, full name dot print so again please appreciate the fact that I am not and I repeat I did not do anything I just renamed the functions are we okay with this okay now I'm gonna run the program so when I run the program it's the same thing as you see it goes why is it giving me an error this already has a body oh did I make a mistake oh hmm. I didn't make a mistake it's, it was IntelliSense let's do it one more time okay so when I run the program you will see it's it, it, first of all this has nothing to do with operator equal that's the constructor so it goes to constructor and comes out over here uh, nothing about that this is default constructor default because there it comes over here calls operator equal goes to operator equal does whatever it's supposed to do then cause plus equal goes to plus equal does what it's supposed to do comes to operator equal again does what it's supposed to do comes to plus equal and does what it's supposed to do and then it prints it and we're gonna see the result coming fret so late. are we okay with this okay now get ready for this <clears throat> any function that is written using plus e, uh, operator actually overloads the real operator which means which means I can either call it like this or I can say last name equals Sole so when I when I write it like this so the top one and the bottom these two are identical no difference you can either use the function name or the op or the or the assignment overload so when I actually run this you will see that when it reaches to this where it actually goes is the operator equal and calls that one so you have a choice either use the function or use the operator type you can call them both ways do we understand this perfect so next thing oh uh, Timor you said no why not what is the problem is it because the name of yeah it is because the name of the function the name of the function when it's operator equal it means it's an operator overload which means because assignment didn't have a meaning between a string and uh, the constant character pointer I am giving it a meaning that's why if I do not have this one if let's let's go back to operator being cat so in here I'm gonna take it back and, and set it to cat so if I if I rename it that way and and I run the program it will work perfectly but that's cat and the other one is plus equal it doesn't make any difference right but in here if I say name plus equal that the plus equal doesn't have any meaning between a, 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 an SDR object and a constant character pointer because it doesn't have a meaning compiler is giving you an error to give it a meaning you can tell to the compiler hey if you see this try the function overload that I created which is operator 
plus equal. And when that is actually done, now the compiler understands what that means. You can either call the function or call the operator shape of it. Uh, Timur, are we good? Um, uh, Ar Arshia, go ahead. Arshia? Can you tell us the short key for changing name in the... <laughs> okay, go to edit. And in edit, it tells you everything. So if you... Uh, uh, actually, it's search and replace. So where, let me see where it is. Find and replace. So quick find is control F. Quick replace is control H. Find in files, replace in files. Okay. So does that does that answer the question? Okay, so I, I didn't want to tell you what it is. Anything that you I do, and you, you see I am using the short keys for it, go to the menus and you're gonna find it. So now that we have these things, we can actually uh, use the operator for them. So I can say full name equals to name. Sets the, sets the name and uh, and full name plus equal last name now I am actually do it like this so oh full name is full name and last name is last name I don't know why is one capital and the other one is not and I run the program everything is will run exactly as I planned for so when it comes to 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 the uh, plus equal it calls the plus equal operator the proper one obviously and then when it calls the assignment it calls a proper assignment for that one and it goes like that this plus equal is uh, between two STRs, so it goes to the one that is between two STRs. And as you see, I'm leaving this plus equal like this. If I wanted to use the operator version of it, I had to go this plus equal STRM data. You can do this, and to make sure that everything is actually good, you have to do it like this. I don't like this. And 90% of all programmers out there like this one better than the other one. But when I have the function, I don't want to write a cryptic thing. It's easier to just say operator plus equal and call a member function. These are member functions. You can directly call them. Obviously, if you didn't want to, you can simply say this is equal to SDR M data. It works the same way. So this falls on the category of, again, potato and potatoes same thing absolutely no difference same thing over here I'm saying I don't like it because I just don't like it it's my preference I rather call the function but your choice um, I think that's more descriptive it tells exactly what is being called and the other one leaves it for the compiler to select the best match. For that one, I'm asking what I want. So it, it just makes me more comfortable. So again, this is potatoes. And this is potatoes. Are we okay down to this point? All right. So, so if we go back over here in our operator, this is what we have. So we are we we experience these, right? Okay. So if I want to do B plus equals C, the most likely signature for this will be 
operator plus equal it belongs to B so it's B type that's the left operand the right operand is C type but it has to be constant because we don't want and obviously we use reference and what it returns is a type so the most likely oper it could have been actually like this too so this is the most likely not the most the, a match for this it's not the best selection because like this it's passing the c by value but the correct one the one that i would like to write would have been as i mentioned this one so constant to kind of indicate first of all i'm going to pass a reference not to pass too much data but that's what it is and in here the same way so in here it's going to be a type b type operator minus equal and const c type reference c for C out, I wanted to say something because C out returns a C out, so it's O stream reference uh, O stream because C out is an O stream, and then operator C type reference C. But the problem is that, but the problem is that. I do not have access to C out. I cannot go add a member variable to C out to make my C type getting printed. So I cannot do this overload. This cannot be done. So this cannot be done since C out source code is not ours to modify. I'll show you how we'll do it later on. But for now, keep it that way. Do we understand this? All right. So now let's talk about unary operators. Let's say instead of, so I'm going to save this. I'm going to say uh, B uh, uh, binary no side effect dot CPP. So that's binary no side effect. <clears throat> Let's say I would like to have something like this. So instead of instead of writing the code like this, let me just take these things off so it makes it cleaner. So I have the last name. So I'm going to put over here something like this. So let's say I want to be able to do something like this. I want to say um, full name is set to name. Okay, done this. So this is complete. Okay. Now I want to concatenate Soleil to full name, but I want to have a space between the two. So I'm going to say I'm just going to add a space before Soleil. So to do that, it would be nice if I had this. And say that overloading prefix plus plus to add a space before. Are we okay with this? Okay, so we want to do that, to add a space before something. I want to do this. So let's see, how can we actually do this? First of all, let's go to the operator. So I am dealing with this. I want to do the prefix unary operator. First of all, because there is only one operand, that's the owner. So there is no question about it, that it's B type, reference, operator, operator, plus, plus. What do I pass as argument? Nothing, because there is no second 
operand. It's only one. And what is it going to return? It's an A-type. Now, obviously, the A-type could be by reference, could be by value. That's not important. The import general important general idea is that this type of prototype is what we need to create to do the plus plus. Do we understand this? So let's do it. So let's do it, see what happens. So in here, I'm going to say, obviously, uh, it is operator plus plus that I'm creating. And it has a side effect, so it changes the owner. And I'm going to return the, I can put over here void because here I'm not returning anything. But we're not going to waste the because it's not returning it. But I'm not going to waste the void. I'm going to actually, you remember I told you never return void. If you have void, return a reference of the current object. So that's what I'm going to do. Operator plus plus is what I'm going to create to accommodate that one. Are we okay? Oh, one person said no. Abby, you said no. What was the question? Abby. Please, if you answer no, immediately you type over there. Don't let me wait for you to see what the problem is. Abby, are you with me? We don't have Abby with us. Anybody have seen Abby around? Abby, you said no. Abby said no to the last question is not responding. <clears throat> okay, so uh, what can I do? All right. So, so this is what I want to do now. Let's create the code for it. So I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to say uh, create the definition. So let's. Baba, you want to say something? No? Okay. So, so I want to, in here, I want to add a space to the current thing that I have. So uh, what can I do? Uh, let me see. Uh, it's actually pretty easy. What I will do, I'm going to create an SDR temp and I'm going to set it to space so it has only one thing. Then I create a temp plus equal the, what should we call it? Uh, uh, plus equal uh, uh, operator, right? So I'm going to say add me to this. So it's going to add to that one. Then I'm going to say uh, set to temp and at the end return temp uh, return uh, this why set is not working in here oh we don't have a set so operator equal there you go so I create a temp that's a space then I add me to to the temp so temp will have a space and me then I'm going to set myself to temp and I'll do this. Reuse your code so you see how it worked out. And are we okay with this? So now when the programmer using our class does plus plus last name, it actually adds the plus plus. Easy breezy. So now I can do uh, what I can do. I can do full name plus equal last name. Now I can say full name dot print oh, oh, two ads and now I'm gonna go print so what happens over here is this it comes over here <clears throat> and by the way I could have called this like this I can say last name dot operator plus plus potato And this one is potato. Do we understand this? All right. So that's that. Perfecto mundo. Uh, let's uh, run it. Oh, 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 stop it, stop it, stop it. It's going to add two spaces now. Oh, let it add two spaces. It doesn't matter. So it comes over here and... It goes to operator plus plus. That's the direct function call. Comes over here, sets the temp to space, adds this to it so it becomes space soleil, and then sets the me the correct the current object to temp. Temp now this will be actually space soleil and returns that one, and uh, deletes the 
temporary thing that was there and goes out okay now last name over here does the exact same thing so now we're going to have two spaces between them temp is uh, sorry temp will get created with the space this is soleil with a space so it becomes two spaces comes out and now um, full names becomes fred two spaces soleil and what it prints it prints like that are we okay with this oh uh arshia you had a question can we have a, oh i'm gonna that's the next thing i'm gonna do okay so arshia is asking can we do plus plus so what so this one i'm gonna say uh c uh, unary prefix dot cp pre fix dot cpp okay uh, first of all let me uh, tell you this we could have you know that we could have done this because it returns a reference because it returns a reference i could have said full name uh plus equal like that right everybody's okay with that because it's returning the reference of last name the result would have been the same no difference okay now now let's go by the next one so now uh, so this one is the same as the other one demoing cascade let's go back what if I wanted to have what if I wanted to have this as Arshia says? What if I wanted to have, instead of having that one, I wanted to say name plus plus. First add a space to name, then do the full name and say full, na full name is uh, plus equal last name. Do we understand this? Now, this is where designers of C++ hit the wall. They said, wait a minute. If I want to, for this, I had I know that plus plus is the operator thingy. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to say, okay, B type operator plus plus. And there is no other argument. So I can't put anything in here. And it's returned, it supposed to return A type. So this is what I have to create. The problem is the signature is identical to the other one. I'm screwed up. I can't distinguish between prefix and postfix. How do I overload postfix? Do we understand what's the problem here? Okay, they said, so the designers of C++ say, okay, because we are in this big big doo doo we're going to do something stupid here and everybody has to play along which means if you want to tell to the compiler hey this is not a prefix put an int in here that int means nothing the owner it's not an argument it's nothing the only thing that int means is that uh int means this one is postfix, not prefix. So that me int doesn't mean argument. It means it is postfix. Just to make sure that this signature is different with that one. That's a big exception in C++. This int doesn't mean anything. Do we understand this? Okay, so now if I want to do postfix, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to write the exact same thing. I'm just going to put an int in there. So this becomes prefix. This becomes postfix. And now let's create the, uh, the code for it. So 
in here I know postfix is going to get called because it's postfix uh, what do I do uh, I'm going to say oh that's, this is actually an easy one I'm just going to say operator plus equal uh, space add a space after and return this I don't need any temporary thing at all okay so so all it's going to do it's going to add the space after so I'm going to come back over here and now we see that it actually means something and when I and again you can you can call them uh, you can call it so so actually let's see so I'm going to say over here um, I have never hard hard called this one let's see what happens I don't know how to actually call it can I put it in here no it doesn't work so how do I call that this is interesting guys I don't know how to call it it never happened before hmm it's stupid but maybe if I go int dummy and put it here a dummy thing <laughs> what this stupid guys don't do this I just I just wanted to see if it calls it but let me see <laughs> let's see if it actually works no it says build errors yeah because local value oh it's initialized so sorry no, gotta do it like this now let's call it one more time holy moly it worked it's for after 30 years of C++ program I've never done this before but now I I hard cut see it's so it just works and it adds that one so it adds one space but please don't do this I'm sorry so I'm gonna say over here please don't do this okay use the plus plus that's better okay so let's 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 start and here I'm gonna say okay so it co it comes up it comes over here goes to plus plus and adds one and now this actually calls the plus plus and it adds one after and it comes down now um, full name becomes name adds it and prints it and I have Fred with two spaces are we okay with this <laughs> now I have a question over here it's something that you need to to know okay uh, you need to you you need to know what if I did so in here I'm gonna say let me just say D calling post fix unary using function name don't do this okay I hope everybody understands why why we don't do this okay please don't do that so that's what I meant so I'm gonna come back over here my question is if I did over here full name is equal to name plus plus would this put a space between name and last name keep going So two people said no and I respect that okay but the answer is yes the fact that in plus plus for so if I have something like this if I have int a uh, and I have B set to 3 if I say a is set to B plus plus we know that a will be a will B3 and B will be 4 do we understand this okay but what I'm saying is that 
please understand that the plus plus that is coming after name is your overload it means it is a new meaning given to an already existing function an overload doesn't have any features of the original one therefore this is a simple function call it's not going to call called after like the plus plus for an integer because that's another one you are just overloading the function if you want this to work that way you have to jump through hoops to do it I uh, will explain when we are coming for the labs because lab our lab is going to be mostly lecture and one quiz so be aware of that so for the lab that you're coming we're going to complete the, the operator overloading but that's what I'm saying so you have to be extremely careful about this it's not going to happen so if I run it you will see that it's a just simple function call when you actually run this program it comes to name it calls the function adds the value returns this so the value that is being returned will have the space after and that will be set to to the operator so the the operator that sets the string it will actually have the value and then it prints it and the space will be between them are we okay with this all right so we're gonna end it right down to here because the next topic is very uh, uh, um, uh, sensitive so I'm not gonna cover it now we're gonna do it on lab Roy what's up Roy yeah exactly you could not mention it better operator overload functions can be called in two different ways using their function name or the abbreviated way calling the operators that's a perfect name perfect thing for it I'll give you a give you a thumbs up for that that was a perfect explanation okay guys uh, um, play with these things if you start coding and doing stuff you may crash the thing because there are certain things we need to know when we are doing operator overload that we still don't know but uh, so we're gonna cover all those things uh, uh, on uh, in during your lab so bring coffee because your lab is early in the morning and be there because it's extremely sensitive uh, so um, yeah just be aware we're gonna have a, a, um, an intense uh, um, information rich session on Friday any questions before we go any questions All right. Thank you very much. Have yourself a beautiful day. I will post the recording um, immediately after. Uh, Suman, go ahead. Bye, Tumar. Suman, you said you have a question. Bye, bye, back. Bye, Raya. Suman? No, no question. All right. Okay. So we're done. Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day.